Hey guys, it's Jake with Memory Cards, and I'm here to bring you a final impressions, final thoughts video on Dragon Ball Fighters for Nintendo Switch. So this game just released last Friday, uh, and I was really excited for it. I was really looking forward to it. Um, I don't have a PS4 anymore because I gave it to my brother, and I was really missing playing Dragon Ball Fighters. As said in my previous video, I put about 50 hours into the game on PS4, and I would not consider myself a good fighting game player, like, whatsoever. Uh, this seems to be the only fighting game that I've ever really put any amount of time into to try and better myself, and I was just plain looking forward to this on the Switch. So how does it run on the Switch? Uh, it runs almost near identical. There are a few things that are a little bit different, such as the backgrounds being a little bit lower res, lower texture, but everything else seems to be up to snuff. I have seen and heard reports of frame drops, you know, the game dropping from 60 to around 53, but I personally myself haven't noticed that while playing the game. Alongside the menial changes that they've made to the backgrounds, the loading times in the game can seem a little hectic. As I said, I don't have my PS4 side by side to do a reference, but I don't ever recall the loading times being this long. Sometimes it takes almost 30, 40 seconds to load into the initial game, and once you're there, load times for maps and load times for matches, rather, don't really take anywhere near as long as that. One thing that annoys me a little bit about this game is that it has a simple control mode. And while that in itself isn't inherently bad, the way that it's implemented, I think, is pretty lackluster. When you're searching for ranked matches, you have certain parameters that you can switch, like make their uh, level kind of towards yours so it's a more even playing field. You can have it so the connection will be based around people that are closer to you and whatnot. And sadly, as far as I can tell, there's no way to just fully opt out of playing against people who are using simple controls. You can, however, when you get a match uh, ready, see if they're using simple controls by a little green logo in the top near their name. So you can definitely click no and rejoin the pool to find some matches. So let's talk about control styles. So you have quite a few ways to play here. You can play single Joy-Con, which we will then use the simple uh, mode. And I myself, it's it, it's okay if you're playing with a few friends for fun, but you're definitely not going to want to make a habit of using that. Uh, then you can use full Joy-Con set, which once again I don't really like. Uh, the directional Joy-Con buttons are not that good. It's okay to play in handheld, you know, if you're just playing a few rounds here and there, not really going as hard as you can. And then you have the Pro Controller, which is definitely a few steps up, but if you're like me and have the Pro Controller with a wonky D-pad, I know some of them are good, but my D-pad is really not that good. It's pretty stiff and has the, uh, the issue where if you press one button, sometimes it'll press the upper button. I know that on the PS4 and Xbox and PC, I guess, you have a lot better options to play. You can use arcade sticks, and while there are some of those for the Switch, they are quite expensive, and none of them are readily available in stores around me. So what I did was, went out and picked up a Pokémon Tournament controller, which is licensed by Nintendo and made by Hori. And I'll put up a few videos here of me using it, and you might notice something at first. On the back side, it only has left and right triggers, not the ZL and ZR. And if you notice more, you can see on the front that the ZL and ZR buttons are on the face of the controller. It is kind of weird, and it really took me, you know, a good two hours to get used to pressing that to do the Dragon Rush and whatnot. But once you get past that, I would say that this is the best budget way to play uh, Dragon Ball Fighters on the Switch. And it's definitely helped my game improve quite a bit and it's easier to pull off combos, it's easier to pull off uh, the super moves and whatnot. So I definitely recommend at least looking into this or using the Wii U version if you have that because it's usable on the Switch as well. Everything that's in the PS4, Xbox, and PC versions is here as well. Uh, you have the story mode, training mode, practice mode, all of the items that you can buy with the Z coins and whatnot, they're all there. The story mode I won't get too far into. It's <laughs> It's not that good, in my opinion, as a longtime Dragon Ball series fan. It kind of just felt like a fanfiction of sorts, almost. Uh, the only reason why I initially played through it was so I can unlock Android 21, the new character. 
So with everything basically being on par with the PS4, Xbox, and PC versions, there's not really much here to say. It's not like the game has been reworked from the ground up, it's not like it has any crazy additions for the Switch. It's just a well done, competent port. It's, it runs perfectly, it runs as you would imagine. Sure, the loading times can take a little while and they can be a little annoying, but I have faith that that'll be patched out in the future. Because once you're past the initial load, it doesn't really take that long to do anything else. So, did you pick up Dragon Ball Fighters on Switch? Are you going to pick it up? Let us know in the comments down below. If you have any questions or concerns about the game, please let us know and we'll do our best to answer them in depth. So thank you very much, and we will see you guys soon.